Let us now look at RNNT greedy decoding. And the idea behind greedy decoding is to make a local optimal choice at any decoding step. This local optimal choice may not be the globally optimal choice, but it will let us decode without getting into the infinite computational complexity at any decoding step. We would look at it in more detail in subsequent slides. So let's say we have a test audio which has four audio frames in it and we want to find out what is the transcript corresponding to that audio, right? So what we do is we start the decoding. When we start the decoding, our text history is going to be beginning of the sentence. We pass this text history and we get the text embedding. We take the audio features corresponding to frame one. We pass them through audio encoder. We get the audio embedding. We pass the audio embedding and text embedding to the joiner and then we pass it through the linear layer and softmax and we get the probability distribution over our letters and a blank symbol as well. Right? So now we look at the different probabilities assigned to these different symbols and we see which one of them has the highest probability. And here the highest probability is assigned to emission with the blank and we assume that this is a good enough choice to make at this particular text history and at this index. So now I will say that the emission of blank is a local optimal choice which is probably going to be good enough for my decoding. So if I make that choice then in the previous frame I made a local choice to emit the blank. So I would have gone to the next time frame because emission with blank will take us to the next time frame. So I'm now in the time frame 2 so my audio feature has become x2. Whereas my text history is still beginning of the sentence. I pass the text history through the text predictor. I get the text embedding. One thing to note is that since the text history has not changed, I can reuse the text embedding which I had in the previous step. So rather than recomputing the text embedding, you can reuse from the previous steps text embedding, right? So now you have the text embedding as GU. You had the audio features corresponding to the frame two, which you passed through the audio encoder and got the audio embedding. So now you take the audio embedding and text embedding, pass it through the joiner. Since the audio embedding has changed, the probability distribution would also change, right? And let's say now the highest probability is given to the letter B and you assume that local optimal choice is a good enough choice. So since you emitted a B in the previous step and which is non blank, so you will continue to stay in the time frame too, but your text history has changed. So rather than having the beginning of sentence as text history, now you have beginning of sentence in B. So since the text history has changed, your text embedding would change, but you would still have the same audio embedding. So you pass the text embedding and the audio embedding through the joiner linear layer and softmax and you get a new probability distribution. And now let's assume that the highest probability is given to blank and we again say that this is a local optimal choice. Since we gave the highest probability to the blank in the previous step, so we would have gone to the next time step. So now we are in the audio frame three. I pass the audio features corresponding to frame three through the audio encoder. So I would get a new audio embedding, but my text history has not changed. So my text is embedding would still be the same. Since the audio embedding has changed, it would give rise to a different probability distribution. So let's say now the highest probability is given to the letter E. So you make this as a local optimal choice. At this point, since you had emitted a non-blank symbol, so your text history would have changed so you would have a new text embedding, but you are still in the audio frame three. So your audio embedding remains the same. But since the text embedding has changed, the probability distribution would change. And let's now assume that the highest probability is given to blank. So since you have emitted a blank in the previous step, so you would now go to the next audio frame because whenever we emit a blank, we go to the next audio frame in the RNNT formalism, right? So now you are in the next audio frame. So your audio features would be different. So your audio embedding would change, but your text is history would still be the same. So your text embedding is same. But since the audio embedding has changed, you would have a different probability distribution. And let's say the highest probability is now given to letter E. 
So now you are in the next decoding step and since you have emitted a non-blank, so your text history has now changed to beginning of sentence B, E and E. So you have a different text embedding, but you are still in the time frame 4, so your audio embedding is not changing. But since the text embedding has changed, you would get a different probability distribution. And let's say that the highest probability now is given to blank. Since the highest probability is given to the blank, that means that in the next decoding step, you should go into the next audio frame, but you have only four audio frames in your audio. So there is no next audio frame. So you can say you are done with the decoding, right? So with this, rather than continue to generate infinitely many candidates from a current time frame, we are able to now finish the decoding by assuming that at every distinct text history and the audio frame, I would make a local choice and take the choice with the highest probability as my optimal choice and be done with the decoding.